Hi everyone, I just want to welcome you to our Facebook webinar. Um, to introduce myself first a little bit, my name is Christine Kim. I am a premier counselor at IvyWise, which is an education consulting company and we work with students worldwide to get ready for the college and admissions process. Um, obviously, we're here today to discuss more specifically how the coronavirus situation is really impacting the college admissions process, not only for our seniors, but also for our juniors and sophomores and even younger students. And so hopefully we'll go over some relevant information, um, some updates, um, and um, share some resources. Um, I will also be spending some time at the end answering some questions that we've been getting from our students and our parents as well. And if you would like to join us and offer your comments and suggestions and questions, uh, please comment um, as well and we'll hopefully uh, be able to, to consider um, some of them, especially those are common to a lot of students and families out there as they're thinking about how to uh, really respond and take in all of that's going around um, us. Um, and I want to also just take a minute uh, to let you know, too, that beyond today's webinar, that you can definitely follow us on Facebook, um, and we will post information as things go along. And of course, you should always um, check out our blog, uh, blog.ivywise.com, for the latest information. We have a number of blogs um, up going, uh, addressing virtual learning, um, to canceled college campus tours, to how to manage waiting for the decisions as they're coming out right now for our seniors. As as well as other information about cancellations and testing uh, updates, et cetera. So definitely it's a great place, uh, one place, one stop for all to get the latest updated information. So please um, bookmark us. I have lots of bookmark going on right now um, related to COVID-19. So be sure to include um, IVYs, our blog, especially blog.ivywise.com as um, part of your updated um, uh, bookmarks. So a few kind of common topics to talk through before we dive into the question and answer portion of it. Um, a lot of students and families are wondering about um, the college admissions decisions, especially relevant for seniors who are getting some decisions already, but they're also waiting for a lot more or some more in the coming days and weeks. And they're wondering, is that going to be impacted? And so far from our perspective, seeing the ones that have released decisions, they seem to be right on time. Um, so I think it's it's going to be on time for the other schools who are releasing their decision literally in the coming days at the end of March and um, by April 1st. So do stay tuned um, and check our web. Again, our blog is keeping up the most updated list of release dates that we know. So that's a great um, uh, resource to have on hand to to, to check for that. Um, some general advice about students waiting. I know this is common even um, apart from the coronavirus situation, just in any typical year, um, seniors often or parents often contact me and thinking, oh gosh, you know, how can we kind of stay engaged and not get too nervous about this process? Um, one advice I have just for all students, having been on the other side as an admissions officer, both at Yale University and Georgetown University, is that really just um, trust the process. I know it's hard to have from your side and I've, I'm on your side as well. I'm waiting for decisions of my students. Um, but having sat on the other side of the desk, so to speak, I do know that real people um, make these decisions and they do take into all these into um, consideration. They spend a lot of time reading through your applications, your essays, what your teachers have said about you, all of the activities that you've been doing. So really um, just trust the process. Um, myself and all of my colleagues um, at Ivy Wise, we were all former admissions officers. So real people really do make these decisions and not some black box machine that's just turning out some algorithm. Um, so trust the process, that's one thing. They're trying to do their best to put together uh, the best class for their particular stu um, institution school. Also focus on the positives. I think, you know, given that um, pretty much all of us are now at home, um, to just spend some time reflecting on all that you've accomplished um, the last four years of high school. You've done amazing things in your classrooms, outside of your classrooms, with science competitions, athletic performances, tournaments, music um, recitals, performances. There's so much that you should be proud of. I know that it's hard, it's frustrating, it's disappointing um, right now that you've worked so hard toward all these goals to graduate. Um, 
and then some you know schools are discussing commencement etc um but not to lose sight of all the things that you've worked towards so stay positive um and focus on all that you've accomplished and be proud of that um and also just to realize that there are um lots of good options out there i know that working with students over the years that yes the dream schools are something that we all fix our attentions on but there's so many great schools and hopefully you've thoughtfully put together a great college list and for some seniors you may have a Already heard from some colleges to really look into everything those colleges have to offer to you um, and think about the possible um, possible and exciting journey ahead and not to just fixate on perhaps one or two top dream schools or reach schools uh, and think that you know if I don't get into that school that's you know I, I won't have an exciting college career not true at all to really discover all that colleges and universities that you've gotten into and what they have to offer to you Another set of common kind of concerns that we've been hearing from students or just the situation as it's developing is that a lot of college visits um, are postponed or canceled, or college events are uh, canceled. Um, that includes not just uh, tours and information sessions, but also admitted student weekend opportunities. Um, in fact, pretty much universities are moving even for their own classes to an online system. Um, various universities were in the midst of their spring break or getting ready for spring break. So there are just a lot of changes and you know, pretty much, I think, um, physically visiting a campus is not really possible at this point. However, one of the great benefits of how virtual world, digital world, is that you can still get to know colleges really well by um, researching them online and doing virtual tours. In fact, for those of you, maybe some of you may already know, there are great virtual tours that you can take. So you visit is a great place to start, but you can also log into various colleges and their websites and look for those virtual tour opportunities where you can actually see physically um, what the campuses are like. So that's a great way to just get to know kind of the architecture and the campus feel, et cetera. Um, and a lot of colleges uh, with admitted student weekend have um, a, a admitted student weekend or programs have moved to virtual events. Um, I did one actually for a, uh, not a college version, but a, for something else, and it worked really well. There was a panel of parents and students sharing with incoming students what to expect. So I think virtual events and opportunities can work really well to connect people and pass along very important information about that. Um, so definitely stay tuned as you're getting information about for seniors, for example, about being admitted. Um, to look out for opportunities for virtual events, um, mid student events as well. Um, I think for students who are researching in the process, I think another great place to go to are um, just the college's websites themselves. Um, I actually spend a lot of time with my own students, uh, Ivy White students, when they're doing research about colleges to look through very carefully all the academic programs that are offered by particular universities. You know, we talk about their academic interest and how do you envision which major you would pursue, a minor or certificate. So that's actually a great place just to go um, to the college's websites and to do a deep dive into all the academic programs they offer, including study abroad. You can look at courses, you can look through those um, on a course catalog or registrar's website. Um, sometimes a lot of the departments connect all their courses available right with the department. You can also research professors, faculty, looking through their bios and their CVs, um, as well as the research they're doing. Some of them are involved with research labs. So there are a lot of things that you can kind of click through and take good notes as you go through that. Um, on the other um, aspects of the college uh, experience, you can also research about residential life. Um, you can read about student activities. In fact, if you can find student contacts um, available on the website, they would be great people to reach out to current students. And if you have friends or know of a friend, friend, brother, you know, friend who went to this college, that's another great way to actually talk to current students and alums about their experience. And you can connect with them in a very um, in a variety of virtual ways by from anything from email kind of old school now to social media um, to connecting by Skype, by zoom by facetime or just a good fashion way of calling them and say hey can i uh, learn about your school and your experience there so um, that's you know even in kind of not in our current situation in normal times that would be a great way just to talk to current students and alums about their opportunity so um, so there are a lot of great resources that you can definitely utilize and again you can go to our website look at our blogs on this topic as well as other resources that we have available at ivywise.com to get your research um, and, and keep learning about colleges even though you may not be able to visit them. So those are good resources um, as well. Um, I see that it's uh, 2.10 uh, so we've kind of started for about 10 minutes in case uh, folks are still joining us. I just want to 
kind of pause for just a quick second to say um, who we are and what we're doing here. I'm Christine, um, a premier counselor at Ivy Wise. I'm just giving some updates on the college admissions process in response to the coronavirus situation um, as it kind of it's literally hourly developing. So um, just before we talked about um, postponed, uh, well, not postponed, but just college decisions, whether or not they're postponed as coming out, um, as well as how to research colleges uh, virtually, whether for admitted seniors um, or for current junior juniors and sophomores or even younger students wanting to learn more about colleges that they might be interested in. So feel free to come back to the webinar. We'll have it posted and you can rewind and, you know, go through the various parts um, as pertain to your questions. Um, as we kind of just move on to the next section um, topics, um, there are about, uh, there's some questions about reply dates, kind of, uh, this is more specific to senior as well. Um, again, this is kind of hour to hour, day to day kind of development. If you are admitted to a school, uh, traditionally, the national reply day has been May 1st. Um, some colleges are making some um, accommodations to extend their reply deadline to June 1st. So that's the first thing to check is if you've been admitted to school, to look for your response date, it may have, um, they may have already announced that it's postponed to um, June 1st, so that students would have more time to um, to consider their options. If not, if you don't know, or if it's still today, um, May 1st, you can always reach out to your admissions office um, to ask if they do have an extension or if they would consider an extension if you really need to um, take the time to kind of figure out how uh, where to enroll and what would be the best fit for college. Um, and again, just some general advice about what to keep in mind when students are making these decisions about when to enroll in the absence of these campus visits or admit a student um, programs. I think one is still considering the academic match. Um, so if you have a couple of offers, great, congratulations, that's so exciting. Um, every college, even the same major, English major is offered differently um, at various colleges. And so spend some time getting to know the programs, the courses, what they have to offer to you. Um, as we'll get to know the campus socially, uh, what the students are like, you know, um, of course, most campuses offer a variety of opportunities, but as you know, you know that some campuses have certain type of a vibe or culture or particular interest or strength to them. So take your time to discover the social fit of the campus as well. So again, if you've been admitted, hopefully um, the colleges are offering um, live students for you to talk with and connect with to learn about their campus to help you make uh, these decisions. So academic, important, um, social, um, opportunities, um, you know, I think are important as well. And for students who um, are considering financial aid, that's again another really um, important aspect. You may have multiple financial aid packages to consider. Um, so definitely consider what's feasible for your family and what's realistic. And if you have any questions about the financial aid that you received, um, as with any normal year, that if you have any questions about financial aid, just reach out to the financial aid admissions office um, to have a conversation with the financial aid um, director directors who are working on your financial aid packet as well. So it's really just that same holistic uh, component to keep in um, mind, academic, social component, financial component, to help you make the best decision possible. Um, again, talk to as many people as possible. Um, all of us are kind of homebound, so there might be opportunities to connect by phone, and, um, by Facebook, or um, by you know uh, FaceTime, or Skype, any of these um, online uh, virtual means that you can connect with individuals. Um, perhaps one of the big kind of um, sector of questions and concerns and um, updates uh, relates to testing. Um, there are a lot of specifics. So again, I would refer you to our website and our blogs to be updated. Um, literally, um, I think earlier in the week, I was on the phone call with someone and as I came out of phone call, a uh, new announcement is made by the College Board about the APs. So it is very developing. Um, one thing to know is that all these organizations, the College Board, the ACT, um, and IB organizations are really considering, and I'm sure internationally, uh, globally, there are other types of um, tests um, in the spring that are coming up. Um, the French Bach, for instance, all of these organizations are thinking very, very hard about how the coronavirus situation is impacting all these spring tests and exams, um, and potentially even this summer, how they will impact. So, um, do, do, I mean, it's, um, 
it's easy to say don't worry but really um, to really just stay updated we're all kind of in it together so um, be informed and stay updated so far what we know um, in terms of the SAT is that the rescheduled March date has been canceled as well as the May SAT date which um, the SAT and subject test are ministered on the uh, May date so if you have an opportunity um, do consider the June as a possible um, date for you to take your SAT or a subject test if you're planning for that um, as well as their August dates and you can look on the College Board for uh, their traditional um, dates. I, again, I, I cannot speak for the College Board. They may have additional dates, they may not. So really do stay on top of information as it's coming out. Um, but they understand, students and parents and uh, college counselors and colleges, everybody talking about this, the College Board understand and they're trying to make these decisions. Um, for the ACT, um, the AC, April ACT will be postponed and it'll be held on June um, 13th. And that's, June um, has traditionally been another ACT test date. So again, if you um, were registered for the April, you got an email from this uh, uh, ACT organization um, and you can reschedule for June or future test dates. So do plan for that as well. Um, perhaps a big question that I'm getting a lot from um, parents and students um, will be the AP exams in May. And that was kind of the latest announcement that College Board put out that there are considering opportunities um, and options. And again, you know, uh, right now, the, what they're uh, in the post, latest post that they posted is that they're considering even um, for students to take the exams at home. And more information will be available on March uh, 20th. And I know that this concerns not just the juniors who want to take it for admission purposes but also for seniors and other students um, who are thinking that maybe my AP um, um, exam score can give me college credit. So beyond the college admissions implication, but also actual college learning, college credits. Um, so the AP, you know, the College Board is definitely sure taking all these uh, questions um, and implications into consideration as well. Um, internationally, um, there are a lot of students uh, who are also uh, part of the IB program. And again, you know, for the precise language, go to our website, go to the IB.org website for, um, for the information. But right now, the IBs are um, going on for schools that are not impacted. For schools that are impacted, the IB organization is uh, encouraged students affected by your school's closure to work with your schools to uh, consider possibilities of um, how to work ahead. So there are some extensions to various course deadlines. Um, our blog has it, um, the IB.org um, website has these extensions. So uh, do stay on top um, and by visiting our website or um, go to the testing organization's website to take a look at exactly how you are impacted. Um, and I'm sure students, um, your schools are thinking very hard about all these things and they're working very hard. I'm part of various forums and I see that counselors are working over time. Um, schools are working over time to ensure that your learning is, um, I mean, we're all impacted, but minim as, as least impacted as possible. So they are considering these questions um, as well. And in any given year, um, even on a, in a normal year where testing goes on as usual, um, I always do um, encourage students to consider the over um, close to actually uh, 1,100, 1,100 test optional and test flexible colleges in the U.S. There are wonderful colleges, um, including the University of Chicago and Bowdoin. Um, so take a look um, at this full list. Test uh, fairtest.org uh, does post an updated list of all the schools that are test optional and test flexible. So um, that's perhaps a good time to kind of take a look at those resources and see um, some schools that do not put as much or if any emphasis at all on testing and consider student more holistically apart from the testing components so um, so that's um, those are great resources out there that you guys can take a look and think ahead about your um, your test prep and my general advice again just um, two kind of quick thing one is to continue prepping as um, as usual and if anything to really see this as an opportunity you have more tests I'm sure you know students will say like I would always appreciate just an extra week or two just to study so here's your time um, so that might be a good thing too to have more time to study on your own to work in a group or um, do some prep with a tutor so that's that's one thing is to continue your test prep if anything I think when you're at home to have a, um, a schedule say hey I'm I'm going to study Mondays and Wednesdays or I'm going to study for 45 minutes um, in the morning so give yourself a schedule and try to keep it uh, keep to it as much as possible um, and also now I think since we're immediately um, kind of focused on the, the upcoming test dates um, that you can 
take a look at the fuller range of test dates offered into the fall and, um, and for younger students into uh, 2021 and to plan ahead holistically what your testing schedule may look like now that our uh, March and our April and our May test dates are shifted to kind of um, look um, at the whole testing picture more fully um, and to work maybe out, you know, on paper, like through a worksheet that you develop on your own, like when you can take um, these tests, um, you know, given that your immediate test dates are impacted. Um, another question um, or topic relates to um, um, the admissions process in the fall. Um, and so this is, um, again, I, this is probably directed to some of the, the juniors more immediately, but also I know that having spoken with uh, my students are sophomore uh, and younger, they're thinking too that various components of this admissions process um, um, are affecting them as well. So one thing to, um, again, to keep in mind is this is a complete fluid situation. If I kind of paused and thought, last Wednesday where we were and compared to where we are today this Wednesday the world has completely changed and it will continue to change day by day so um, so everything we talk about today you know it could uh, be different so um, so just to consider the fluidity of the situation um, so there are a lot of unknowns but at the same time um, even though we uh, what well, we are you know what we don't know exactly what will happen we know that again as i said earlier there are real people making uh real decisions um, and they care a lot about all of you uh, whether it's your schools um, your teachers your counselors as well as universities um, college campuses i just read a great op-ed uh, from the president of the three some of uh, the top universities um, in the country talking about being on the front line of just reacting to the COVID situation to all the administration and staff of the admissions offices they are all thinking about all of you <laughs> uh, the public out there so i uh, know that whatever decision will be made it will be thought through um, and so if anything today i could just um, kind of walk through maybe some specific components of the missions reading rubric so that you can think through how potentially it might be impacted and how you can respond um, in a fluid way to these updates. Um, obviously, one um, aspect would just be grades as schools shift to online learning and school closures that was about two weeks now may um, be more um, a kind of an extended period. So grades will be impacted. This will impact seniors um, graduating as well as sophomores, juniors, freshmen, um, younger students, um, elementary school students. So that will be um, shifted and how you learn will be shifted. So I think do the best you can to keep up your schoolwork and earn those grades as you would um, if you are in school physically. So just keep up that. So the colleges will be thinking through the grading components and how grades uh, grading will be impacted. Um, testing, we just um, spoke about that. The dates are, um, you have fewer dates and um, less opportunity perhaps to take them, especially for juniors. And so colleges will probably react to that as well. Um, again, I know there are you know, considerations of being completely test optional or considering this and that. So again, we don't know exactly. Um, I think they're thinking about this, um, but testing could be potentially will be affected by that. Um, other things are um, activities and competitions. I know there are a lot of things that students were going to travel to or hold locally um, that will be impacted because you can't engage in extra curricular activities or uh, attend, you know, competitions and tournaments, um, etc. Those will be um, factored to the process. So what happens when you have zero extracurricular activities? Uh, clearly, you're not going to be penalized because no one is able to to you know, participate in these sports or travel to do a science fair. That's kind of a given. Um, your relationship with your teachers and counselors will be uh, impacted um, because you're not meeting with them face to face. So everything from um, getting advice from your school counselor to your teacher recs, those will be uh, impacted. Summer plans, um, I know a lot of students were planning to do a summer camp or summer research or travel. Um, lots of fun things, lots of you know great academic opportunities, those will be impacted. Some will shift to online, others will be canceled completely. It's going to be um, you know different and that's impacting juniors as well as sophomores and freshmen. So we're kind of, again, all in it together. Um, so we know the process will change. We don't know exactly how. So I just want to at least kind of demystify the process that, um, you know, students should not be, um, you know, uncertain that this is going to just adversely impact them. This will be a pretty much universal reaction um, for all students and not just even the junior class, but also um, the students who are currently in high school. Um, you know, the freshmen, um, the sophomores who will be impacted um, as well. And again, you know, just to emphasize, 
admissions people are real people making these decisions. Um, myself, my colleagues at Ivy Wise, we were all former admissions officers. We've been there. We've been through the process. People are trying really hard to uh, make the best decisions possible under these, um, you know, we used to say extenuating these circumstances, but these are truly extenuating and extraordinary um, circumstances. So um, hang in there. Um, and it, I, I think we will see kind of our collective spirit um, coming together to um, make it the best that we can for all the students involved. I am um, going to move now just to some answer uh, questions and answers that we've actually been getting uh, quite a bit from Ivy White students, um, and we've also fielded beforehand. So if you have a question, peel, uh, please feel free to comment below, and I'll try my best to get to them. Um, I may not be able to get to every single question, um, as I know some are more um, specific and personalized. Um, so if if you don't get your question answered, do please visit our uh, blog and our social channels um, with a ton of resources published that might um, have some answers to your questions already. So follow our Facebook page, like our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, visit our blog, again, at blog.ivywise.com. Lots of great information, uh, great information, great resources that you can use to stay updated. Uh, and connect it. Um, again, some of the questions we have been getting a lot about relate to testing situation. Well, test scores, even those, um, you know, been taken to be uh, delayed. Um, if, you know, there are expecting any test scores that are coming out, uh, delays possible. I think everybody is trying to manage what is immediate right now. Um, and everybody's making decisions like hour by hour. Uh, so, um, if you can, you know, just stay on top um, and um, and rest assured, again, that it, it will, um, we're all in it together. So the, the responses will be, um, you know, addressed to everybody to the best that they can. Um, so stay on top of, you know, SAT, ACT, APs, IBs, um, any other international testing. So check those uh, websites, check our website, um, um, stay on top of your school information as well. Um, I address some of the um, how can I get to know colleges um, from home. Um, so if you you know, you know want to rewind this post later on, you can definitely get some of the answers. Um, I think a lot of it you can do research. Um, just to briefly summarize here, you can do uh, virtual tours, um, go into the colleges' websites, um, really kind of spend a lot of time digging through. There's so many tabs to click through. Uh, now's the time to, to kind of click through, talk to people or communicate with people who've been there, um, current professors, um, students, alumni to get their take um, as well. So there are a lot of opportunities even for you to research colleges um, you know, from home um, without being physically on campus. Um, earlier I talked about the test optional schools. Again, fairtest.org provides a full list. Close to 1,100 schools are test optional or test flexible. So definitely take a look. A lot of them are very much top tier colleges and universities um, in the U.S. Um, you know, testing is a piece of the overall admissions process as colleges have been telling students um, for a long, long time. And this will be even more so than uh, this coming um, admission cycle. Um, and these schools have actually been doing without really the testing component or requiring it for many years. Um, so they do um, take students holistically. I just do other schools. I'm not saying they don't. Um, they do uh, take students holistically into the process as well. So uh, many schools have done it without testing, um, and in many schools may choose to do that in the future. We don't know. Um, but test optional schools, the current list as they exist, um, these are great schools and definitely possibilities to think about that you can research as well. Um, for the summer, um, a lot of students are saying, well, um, now I'm starting to kind of think about the summer and things might be canceled moving to online. How can I still have a productive summer um, if my program's canceled or if I, it's not going to happen, I can't travel? Um, one thing I think is that, again, colleges will understand if you happen to have, quote unquote, a gap, um, you're not, you know, in a lab doing research or you're not competing, well, you can't because you have to, you know, practice social distancing or just programs are canceled, et cetera. So um, that, is, you will not be penalized for that. Things that are completely out of everyone's control as well. But at the same time, you can still make your summers very productive um, for the postponed test dates. You can spend time doing test prep that normally you're, you know, crunch for time and you don't have time. So now you can spend time doing working on that. Um, I love self-directed learning. I think that's one of the best ways to just kind of deep dive into a particular subject. There are lots of great 
sites on the internet that you can, uh, platforms that you can utilize to take online courses. Uh, my favorites include EDX, um, Coursera, MIT um, OpenCourseWare um, offers great courses um, from MIT, Yale Open Courses, amongst others, offer free online college classes. So this is more than ever a great time to um, self-learn and to still to explore your academic interest um, and really kind of deep dive um, deeply into a subject and become a uh, subject um, expert and be very pointy, as we would say, in the admissions um, preparation, uh, be a pointy student, um, knowledgeable in a particular subject. Um, another thing I was thinking about, too, is um, uh, there are, as I'm kind of just myself getting information, um, there are great um, crowdsourcing, you know, so lists being compiled by um, people. So if you um, get lists, you know, about summer opportunities or, or just a ways to spend summer, be kind and share it. So um, that would be a great way to kind of just, again, uh, think creatively about opportunities. Um, again, and on the note of being creative, um, virtual communities, you can um, still keep up with, I was just thinking um, earlier, writing workshops. You can tutor, you can tutor others, others can tutor you. You can have math circles and music groups all virtually. Um, my daughter just did a, a virtual piano lesson the other day, so you can still have music exchanges. Um, we are connecting virtually, but that's still very possible to continue with some of your uh, virtual community. In fact, start these virtual communities if you uh, haven't been involved as well. Um, caring for your um, neighbors, kind of continuing the service components of it, as um, we're learning that the COVID-19 um, uh, virus uh, disproportionately affect elderly um, and or those with underlying physical conditions. Of course, um, be healthy, be safe, not saying, uh, you know, uh, put yourself in uh, a healthy or risky situation. But as we learn more and as we develop a rhythm, the summer might be a great opportunity to just kind of serve those who are in need. I think the need will be greater than ever. So the, to the extent that you can look for opportunities opportunities to, uh, to practice uh, neighborly love and be good neighbors, um, you know, uh, metaphorically and or in, literally like your next door neighbor. Um, so be um, caring and think of service opportunities to, to be there. Um, again, it's a great time to connect with passions. If you um, have, you know, if you practice piano years ago, but stopped in high school because you didn't have enough time, great time to fall in love with piano, fall in love with art, um, you know, to pick up your passions that you, you have. Um, for students who can do research online, um, there are studies, even for science kids who can't go into a lab, there are, I, I don't know how many scientific studies out there that you can read about and still become an expert. A lot of libraries have online resources, both local libraries as well as university libraries. So use all these online tools that have been there for many, many years uh, and fully explore them and continue uh, with your research. And of course, keep reading. The best way to learn is to read, read, and read. Reading is good for writing. Reading is good for the mind. Just keep reading. So um, if you have a book list that you've been meaning to tackle because you're too busy, now is a great time. Summer is a great time to, to dive into that reading list that you've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, let's see. Here are some other questions. Um, another one um, relates to... Um, seniors um, who might be hearing back from colleges in terms of whether or not the, um, the wait list, if you're waitlisted, how that may be impacted. Again, I think that's a very fluid situation. If you're getting a waitlist decision, first of all, just to read very carefully um, the waitlist information. Um, 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 from the colleges and how they want you to respond. Sometimes they want you to, you know, respond in a specific way to stay on the wait list. So definitely do that and demonstrate your interest. If you're concerned about um, kind of how your grades, if you're waiting for um, spring senior grades to kind of um, be a factor in the waitlist process, again, um, it's still very fluid. We don't know. So in the absence of concrete information, I would say just keep your online learning that your school is giving you or however your teachers are instructing you. Do the best that you can. These are very trying times for everyone. We all understand that. So um, to the extent that you can, keep up your grades. Um, if you're concerned that your spring grades may impact your waitlist position. Um, so again, we're all managing this together. High schools are responding um, and your counselors will be communicating with colleges too about where they are and, and transcripts and all of things these were are all being thought through by very um, thoughtful people and very caring people so um, so again it's being considered we will get more information but to the extent you can stay on top of your coursework same for juniors sophomores and freshmen 
keep on top of your schoolwork as being directed by your teachers, by your school. Um, so that's definitely something to, to keep in mind. Um, some students are, have asked about uh, taking a gap year or deferring enrollment because I'm not sure if I can travel. There are a lot of international students and they're just kind of thinking ahead like, what if I can get to, you know, this university I want to, um, what do I do um, in this coming year? Um, gap year um, for students are always an option. Um, I think, you know, uh, Again, depending on how the corona um, virus situation and in terms of travel restriction or just moving restrictions, uh, again, you can always keep uh, if kind of in a um, in a homebound in a uh, social distance um, situation, you can continue with your self directed learning. There will be I would imagine that a lot more online um, college course credits could be available to you. Um, so again, you can take courses and keep up with your learning. Um, you can go deeper with the research um, project that you really want to do. So some of the things I've already uh, mentioned before, if there are, um, you know, opportunity to move about that, you know, you can be on your immediate kind of vicinity um, for a gap year. Students can work. They can volunteer extensively. Um, they can even start their own entrepreneurial project. Anything to really demonstrate that you're engaged, you're productive, you're making impact, you're serving, you're contributing. Those are all good things. As long as you're keeping yourself, um, one, productive and learning, and two, um, kind of contributing in some significant, meaningful capacity, I think gap year could be a way to consider if you're restricted um, to travel to university or you prefer to take gap year or defer enrollment because of the uncertainty um, that's coming up. Um, some other questions um, relate not maybe specifically to um, um, high school juniors or senior in particular, um, but parents as well in terms of thinking, um, how can I kind of do you know, home um, learning and um, keep all of us, you know, productive and academically motivated. I am in the same boat as you. Uh, many of us are um, working from home and with kids at home, we're trying to uh, develop schedules. And I think that's probably just a starting point. If you haven't already, there are lots of, I, I probably got five different texts over the weekend about, you know, COVID-19 home schedule, school schedule. So whatever makes sense for your family to keep life as normal, get up, get dressed, get ready, um, have breakfast, and then and have an academic schedule. Some schools will have online learning in place um, soon or already. So definitely if you have to be doing online learning for your school, you're engaged with that. Um, so get that schedule out and make sure that, you know, or just revisit and you might need to adjust as you as the days go on, what works, what doesn't, to make sure that the chunks are, um, you know, time appropriate for the different um, age groups might have a kindergartner um, you might have a high school students their attention spans are very different so make sure it's age appropriate um, you know for the different um, children that you have at home I think taking breaks are often uh, good there's one study method I, I used in grad school where you study for 25 minutes you take five minute break um, to implement some sort of um, study break study break kind of uh, rhythm where you might even go out for a breath of fresh air walk around the house um, shoes a basket um, in the hood you know, whatever it may be, and then come back and engage in learning again. Sometimes physical activity, um, as kids have recess during school, is just good to, to have that kind of physical break as, as well. Um, a family project, if you have um, materials lying around to do some gardening project, that's a great way to, um, to keep motivated. And of course, um, just normal kind of healthy life habit could influence how we study. So eat healthy. I've been telling my kids not to snack constantly. And if they were to snack, they should try to eat some fresh fruit um, rather than, you know, um, unhealthy snacks or whatever it may be. So to the extent to kind of keep your healthy eating, healthy sleeping rhythm, um, as well, that could definitely contribute to academic motivation and staying on task, being able to focus. Um, and of course, just to like keep connected and as much as you can, we have scheduled FaceTime with our extended family. My kids are doing FaceTime with their friends. I know some classes are kind of doing FaceTime or hosting various um, virtual group meetings to keep um, friends um, socially connected. Um, so that's another great thing to help in terms of your family, um, you know, kind of day-to-day -day schedule. And um, another Another thing too, and this is again not, you know, just in times that we have now, but um, good for any time is just to be um, grateful. My my daughter keeps a gratitude journal at school that she has to write three things she's grateful for. Um, so I would just encourage all of us to studies have shown gratitude 
um, makes us healthier. Um, gratitude is good for us to keep a gratitude journal, a family journal, individual journal, just practicing mindfulness, uh, meditation, whatever keeps us grounded um, to, to go through our day schedule. Um, as I mentioned earlier, great time to serve to the extent that's healthy and possible, um, you know, delivering grocery to a neighbor if, you know, if they can't be outside of their house, things like that to really um, not only keep our own schedule and motivated, but also to help those around us. Um, some online tools, a lot of people have asked us about that. So I know I'm covering a lot of information here. So you can always listen to portions of this after this is posted. Go to our website for all sorts of good information. So I'm giving you guys a lot of resources here. Um, there are great online resources uh, for test prep. Um, if you just go to the SAT College Board Organization, they have 10 free practice tests. You can go to the Khan Academy, which is the official part of the College Board for SAT prep. They also have AP materials. The ACT organization has ACT Academy. Um, there's a full-length test um, available on the official ACT um, website. There are a ton of other free online resources, so you might just want to spend 10-15 minutes kind of doing quick search and you know see what's good. Um, there's a lot of free stuff out there, so don't feel like you have to always pay for something. Um, and also, you know, YouTube channels. I, I know students use that to um, watch various kind of you know, AP or test prep related videos that could be helpful as well. And for AP um, materials, other than you know, what I mentioned about Khan Academy, um, the AP um, site, AP students offer great resources. A lot of times students don't think about that is if you go to AP students, um, they list all the AP exams. There's course description, exam description, including past questions um, from, you know, previous exams that you can utilize um, and you can always purchase um, study guides. Um, so again, a lot of great things. Um, they're free virtually um, that you can utilize. And as I mentioned earlier, a uh, great time to start virtual study group. Um, if you are tutoring or you're tutoring others, that can still continue. Uh, you've got to be maybe a little bit creative, but study groups, um, tutoring can still happen virtually. So keep up with that. Um, other great, uh, you know, kind of regular homework and school work resources. Uh, a good place is actually just go to your school and school district's website. Um, it, sometimes, again, we are so caught up in kind of our day to day business prior to all of this that our schools already offer a lot of excellent online resources. So that's a great place to start. Um, I have, again, in the last few days, gotten great um, just advice um, from, you know, anything from Scholastic to Khan Academy, which offers beyond SAT prep um, and AP information, but younger students. My, there was a reading comp for second graders for elementary school students. So just, there's so many like great resources out there that are free right now because people realize that students are homebound. So um, again, crowdsourcing is a great way if you get lists um, shared and you find helpful, share with others so they can access these um, online resources as well. Again, I said, you know, keep reading. Um, you know, a lot of books are uh, available, audiobooks, ebooks from lending libraries. Um, and if you're done, return it as soon as possible. Don't wait until the end of three weeks or two weeks or whatever so that others can get access to uh, ebooks. Um, keep reading all the publications, uh, magazines. Uh, I am a big podcast fan. I listen um, to podcasts every day to learn things. Um, Freakonomics, Planet Money, TED Radio Hours, on and on. There's endless list of various subjects that you can learn um, just through podcasts. So lots of great resources um, for students, for families, as you're kind of homebound for um, the coming weeks and um, to really take um, you know advantage of uh, you know what's available freely and uh, and be kind and generous to share things that you find valuable uh, post it on your Facebook share it on your social media uh, email it to people so that others can know about these uh, resources as well um, these are some um, questions and resources again you know follow our you know, um, Twitter and our Instagram, um, like our Facebook page and turn on your notifications. So when we um, send out updates, you get notified as well. Bookmark ivywise.com, blog.ivywise.com so that you can stay the update through all the great information and resources that we're putting out. We will make this video available on our Facebook page. So share with your friends and anyone else that you think might find this helpful um, because they're unable to tune in. Um, and if you, of course, like direct support or guidance, um, ivywise, um, and our counselors and tutors, we also have tutoring services, are available. Um, we actually have been virtual for years and years and years. So this is all normal um, for us. This is how we do it. I counsel students through Zoom. Um, my colleagues do, our tutors tutor through uh, Zoom. And so we are very up to speed and uh, experienced and practiced um, um, utilizing these uh, resources as well. 
so I'm just going to kind of turn over if I'm looking on the side of the screen here to see some questions from current um, sorry if I'm reading Great. Um, it seems like a lot of questions I'm just reading on the site. Hopefully, um, I will. I have answered your questions, but a lot seems to be um, about you know questions um, like you know Diane who asked about will colleges expect to start on time in the fall? Will there be changes? Again, I think not just colleges but our our own high schools and you know elementary schools and middle schools will they start on time in the fall? It's very to be um, up. You know, to, to be determined. I think we were uh, we we're really just kind of unfolding. So a lot of the um, kind of in the future projections, I, all of us are asking these questions. So um, please just stay updated. Check our websites. Check your school's website, college website. Um, more information. I think uh, we're really kind of in the immediate phase, as far as I can you know feel it. Um, as the days go on, as month weeks go on, um, we will have more information about whether or not things will move online. So uh, there will be um, information forthcoming and. So hopefully, if you you know um, bookmark us or another great resource, um, you can get the updates as they come out, kind of in a centralized place. In fact, um, one of it's linked on our website on our blog, um, NACAC, which is kind of the National Association for College Counselors and Admissions Officers, um, just pulled together a really great resource. They survey all the colleges outside because I know there's just a lot of disparate information and resources coming in in different directions. Um, it's linked onto our blog, um, but they did provide, it's NACAC who provided this link from colleges about um, whether or not they're extending their uh, notification deadlines. Are they still hosting on, on campus events? So as colleges are figuring out their trying to uh, NACAC is trying to pull all that information together. So you can go to the NACAC website or our website and get that link to NACAC's um, resources. So again, um, I'm hoping that we could, all of us could put together um, some centralized resources for parents and students so that you're not searching, you know, 100 colleges to see what they're doing with the Corona effect. In fact, one of our blocks have been keeping up with all the campus closures, um, tours, et cetera, when that was first happening. So um, yeah, centralized lists are really, really great. Or centralized places where you can um, um, be placed on it. Um, I think there will be, uh, there's still a lot of questions. I think Susan asked a question about how important, uh, important of testing um, being, um, uh, how will that, the important testing be affected? Um, again, you know, test dates, um, will SAT and college, uh, what happened with juniors, SAT test college apps. Um, so really kind of the role of testing in the admissions process. Um, again, I, you know, testing in general is one component of the admissions process. It's a holistic process. Um, even more so for the, some of the test optional schools, but certainly for schools that do still require uh, SAT or ACT. Again, this is something I think admission offices knowing, having been on the other side in March, we're really just thinking about let's get the decisions out to the current seniors and then trying to get them excited about coming to our campus and get them to come. And that kind of wraps up in the May, June timeframe. And then they switch attention to the junior process. So I think you mean there are interruptions that kind of, I think flow is still there is there um, dealing with kind of the immediate and as this you know class current class is being put together um, that's being finalized they are shifting their attention and they will be thinking and I know they're thinking about it now what will next year be how much should we weigh testing um, that's to be determined a little bit still in terms of how impacted testing will be is it just going to be March April May will it be June or July August October you know so I think depending on how things unfold um, that would be again um, you know, decided um, as well as you know, how would you consider um, 
activities or summer plans. Um, as I mentioned, you know, all these rubrics, um, the rubric of college admissions reading, all these components, teacher recommendations to um, even filling out the Common App, to testing, to um, summer work, all these components will be weighed, I think, differently. I will say that, I think, um, this year, um, for this coming year of juniors and possibly even sophomores um, and freshmen, who knows, who are all impacted in various ways. Um, so. Um, so that would definitely be weighed into the process as well. So those are all um, good questions. Um, if you cannot, um, I think there were some still AP questions. Um, again, stay tuned for the March 20th announcement. If um, the College Board does move AP exams to the home or some other format, that will be announced. And again, I think you know the understanding too is um, we are trying to, I mean, all the organizations try to do their best. Um, um, to to make sure that the APs happen, they know that this is important not just for college admissions purposes, but also for um, for the students who need the college credits um, to accelerate or in lieu of a college course. Um, the financial implications of that, I think, um, you know, people who are in higher admissions are aware of all these different components, and you know, so it's not just like a canceled AP exam dates. There are great implications of that, and how that might be weighed. So scores might be different because you guys are learning online, or maybe no online learning is happening at all. So um, all schools are affected differently. The scores, even if they do go on, um, if the tests do go on. Uh, may be impacted because normally you could have gotten a five now you got a four because you were out of school for three weeks uh, so you know again these are all like very to be determined questions uh, but these professionals are really do thinking about it you know college school counselors uh, college admission offices your teachers are all thinking very deeply about these questions um, to really to minimize as much of the impact and um, the disruption that's happening to your learning so hang in there students <laughs> uh, about that um, and um, there are some more specific questions about, um, you know, whether or not um, sort of prioritizing different tests. Jennifer asked a question, you know, should we move, for instance, um, should we anticipate like colleges dropping certain requirements um, for, you know, for engineering and science students um, um, and shift to a different um, SAT instead. So those are good questions, a little bit more specific. I think one thing that if I were thinking about that is always go with what's required, most broadly required first. So if you have not taken an SAT at all and you were hoping to take March SAT and the May subject test, now the March and May are canceled, um, I would try to take the SAT in June because that's what you need to apply to all schools for that still require SAT. And then time permitting, it might mean that you have to study for the subject test over the summer or even into the fall, um, you kind of go to the next layer of what's re required or recommended. So always go with, with most fundamentally required, broadly required, um, and prioritize those exams first, and then kind of go to, well, and then amongst, you know, if I'm thinking about STEM and some schools do require, uh, recommend, I need to take math too or science, then kind of go to the next level as well. Um, but don't, um, I think, you know, in the absence of more information from colleges, I wouldn't uh, just presume right now that they're going to drop certain requirements. That's, um, I, 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 I wouldn't recommend doing that at this point, um, assuming that, oh, they're going to get rid of requirements. Um, proceed as with the current information that we have about what's currently required and plan for that with the dates you have. So as I mentioned earlier, look at the fuller set of testing dates, um, even into the fall. Again, I can't say what college in early admissions um, except now November scores or December scores, um, which traditionally has not been in time for early admission. I don't know, um, so but do look at the dates. Um, December scores certainly and November scores um, can be um, helpful in regular decision. So again, you know how will early admissions be impacted? We don't know. Not to be determined, um, but proceed with the current knowledge and don't um, too preemptively make some assumptions about um, what what may or may not be dropped unless you have confirmed information that X, Y, and Z will be dropped or eliminated because of the COVID nineteen situation. Um, um, Terry asked about online testing option for SAT and ACT. The ACT uh, was proved to be computer based um, in September, so I don't know um, again how all of this will um, sort of determine online testing. Again, um, stay tuned for information from the College Board, ACT, etc. Um, you know, certainly, you know, again to you know check with. You know, our website, check with other testing or website, bookmark them <laughs> as just kind of a habit now um, and check regularly for any um, um, 
any sense. So I think um, um, Samuel asked, are any online extracurricular that I would consider? Um, I would say, again, um, there are a lot of competitions um, that may be um, now have shifted to online version. I've read that science fairs are going virtual. So uh, locally and nationally, they're considering various ways um, to do extracurricular activities. Um, so, you know, so they're providing some options. Um, but just in your own context, I'm thinking about students who are part of a uh, debate team and you're just thinking about your high school debate team or your science club. Um, if you're a leader of the club or if even you're just a member of to take this opportunity opportunity to take leadership and think about, again, virtual ways that you could continue some of your extracurriculars that perhaps you can hold online meetings and uh, continue with your debate practice from three to four in the afternoon. Um, so again, just kind of continue with those opportunities and online learning opportunities that I've mentioned as well. So certainly um, we're kind of on pause right now physically to move about, um, but I think a lot of activities can still um, continue um, to the extent that you guys are trying to connect with each other and, and make things happen. Um, um, Harsha asked, um, you know, there are students who might be, um, again, um, uh, interrupted. They're going to science fair and they were going to compete and they announced canceled. How is this going to affect her? I think, again, um, that's going to be a question that college will realize a lot of not you know just local opportunities but national ones have been canceled you can't do that um that's something that you know um, just kind of a general advice um and again if you're working with your college counselor if you love to work with ivy wise you can think more specifically i think as we get more information um overall as you're preparing your college applications um there are ways to still describe that for instance if you um you can still mention that you got first place at a local science fair and and you can say was to complete uh, at a state science fair unfortunately canceled due to the coronavirus situation um, so you can show the level uh, that you were engaged at, um, that were you level you've accomplished and reached at, and still be recognized for that. Um, we don't know, you know, if the, the fair is, uh, you know, state fair is canceled, that you don't know that maybe you could have placed really well. But at least colleges know that you were going to the state fair, and that was stopped because of this particular situation. So um, I think college across, you know, all colleges across the board will see. Um, tens of thousands of students impacted by situations like this and they will have to factor and adjust you know how they evaluate well we don't know who the top finalists are at this x and y z event um we do know that some students as of march you know 2020 reached this level and how will we factor that into it so it's not just you um you know harsha your daughter but also all the really students out there who are impacted similarly um grades um karen mentioned some high schools are not give grades well um switch to pass and fail um it's it's just that's going to happen to many other schools so again um that's something that we will hopefully uh, get clarity as we kind of go along with the process again if your school's giving pass and fail you don't have a b c that will have to be weighed um, into the admissions process and colleges will have to kind of decide how they will going to look at pass fail versus grades and even if you were to give in a grade what does that mean is it you know fall grades um you know extended to spring grades and all sorts of these questions i that i you know all of you guys are thinking all i'm thinking i'm i'm sure actually college admissions officers are thinking about that too is how are we going to sort of look at pass and fail um and they will come together as a staff and i think um on a kind of individual college level and university level as they think about um, how will we evaluate high schools impacted? I will say about the admissions process is that, um, and most admissions offices, um, they are, uh, you know, there are kind of regional assignments or they at least read students very contextually um, in terms of understanding the high school context that they're coming from and what's available to them, you know, the most rigorous courses offered. Um, you know, students often ask me things like, well, what about my GPA, like my 4.3, what does that mean? Well, GPAs are kind of, meaning not meaningless but without context of the high school it's like what was the 4.0 versus the 3.8 versus 5.6 and 7.8 um, so it's the same thing i think in grades that there's always been variation there are schools that have never traditionally given grades out there in the u.s um and so again this year this will be ever more so in like kind of an issue the variation um in transcripts that will impact 
uh, including seniors uh, who might be, as I spoke earlier about waitlist situations, um, but certainly juniors, sophomores, freshmen. Um, and again, that would be in a very contextualized situation. Um, at the very least, you know, um, perhaps high school counselors can provide some just contextualization of how their school decided to deal with the great situation. That could be um, a possible, you know, just at least contextualizing it as they would in any year and as school high schools would in any year to kind of contextualize their school system, how their grading system, course, um, you know, availability, cur curriculum options, etc. So um, great question. Um, and so I think I've answered um, most of your questions. Um, and again, this video will be available um, on with our post. We'll post it, and you're hopefully, you know, if you have time, you can um, come back and you know um, watch this or share it with others. We do ask you like face our Facebook, and again, um, follow us on Twitter, um, follow us on Instagram, um, bookmark ivywise.com, blog.ivywise.com, and other resources. Your school's websites, um, the College Board, the ACT, the I, you know. Um, the IBO, um, dot org, uh, IB organization, IBO.com, um, various organizations that you know that will impact um, whatever situation you might be in. Um, just, you know, um, bookmark that and um, keep updated. I think centralized lists are helpful. We have a lot of the centralized information on our website. That's why I encourage you to go there. But there are other resources as well. So as you see good information, good resources out there, um, be kind and just share. I think um, if there's just one last word um, that I would just kind of leave with all of us today is I, I keep thinking that, you know, we are in it together, um, all of us in my home, and but all of you in your home. Um, globally, this is a global pandemic situation. And the only way to get through it is if we come through it together. And with college admissions, I know that um, there's a lot of certainties for not just juniors and seniors and younger students and parents, um, counselors, admissions, university folks. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty, but I think people, uh, there are real people. And I think when we're come together as a community, uh, we're the most uh, resilient and we're most caring. Um, I think this is an opportunity to really truly for us to care for one another. Um, practicing, um, you know, social distancing that's helpful to all in society as universities that are committed to diversity and equity and access will have to deeply consider how different communities are differentially impacted um, by this pandemic. So um, we hope for the best and I would just encourage you guys to, um, to come together um, as much as we can as a community to get through it together. So stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope you guys will have a productive time. There's a lot to do. I just said, put yourself on a schedule, study for all these exams, um, get together virtual groups, continue with your activities, passions, um, do a family project, um, you know, service your neighbor um, in a safe way, of course. Um, lots of things to to um, keep us busy and healthy and productive and helpful to one another so thank you so much um, and if you know if you have further questions we will hope to properly do other sites if we are getting lots of good questions and we think they're relevant topics so stay tuned um, more from Ivy Weiss thank you once again and stay healthy and safe everyone